So who we got on the phone here today? So uh, there's a gentleman who goes by Fifths, and he's a fan. He's a big fan of the podcast. He's been watching <laughs> a long time. And he, um, during the donation stream, donated a thousand bucks when mm. you did wow. the uh, shout out to have a caller uh, call in. <laughs> But he had an international number, and our phone system, yeah, that's right, our phone system wouldn't let us uh, get to him, Uh, and so we had kind of a technical issue getting through to him, so to make it up to him, we're talking to him today. So uh, here is Fifths, right, Uh, resume call, right, now. Fifths. How you doing? What's up? Hey. (laughs) You... Oh, hi. Okay. <laughs> First of all, thank you so much. You donated. You helped us get to our 100,000. You're a legend. Yeah. I'm sorry we didn't get to answer your call during that live stream, but I am nah, it's all good. joy. You, know, you guys were popping, you know, with Royland, the whole the whole gang. It was really crazy, the whole podcast. <laughs> it wasn't about the call specifically. You guys are doing this for a great cause, and I really appreciate what you guys are doing. God thank bless. You. Thank you so much, mm-hmm. man. You're doing it. Too. I want to yeah, ask no you. Problem. Since we're in the spirit of uh, sharing our favorite moments, do you have a favorite moment that, uh, <laughs> as a, as as a as a audience member of the podcast? Uh, I mean, you guys pretty much covered a lot, yeah. like mm-hmm. most of the moments. Uh, I mean, the the Ricky Tiki Ta, you know, <laughs> yeah. the, when he was calling, yeah, the, the church, and he was going crazy with the yeah. Rick voice. I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Calm down. <laughs> like, I didn't think that he would take it that far. I think it was like a little, you know, goof, and then he'd just stop it. He just kept on going, and I really loved it. Yeah, I was shocked uh, watching that back today about how, actually, how crazy that call was. That lady Yeah, was... no, it was yeah. really awesome. Like, I really, like, the thing is, is that what I love about the podcast itself is that, you know, you guys have this kind of formula going on but you get diversify in a way that you have always these new elements coming in. Mm-hmm. So you have Roy Linden like a couple of times, right? Mm-hmm. But every time he comes in, there's something new added to the mix, like new <laughs> elements, which is something as an audience member, like, holy shit, you know? Damn. Thank you. <laughs> Thank That's you. awesome to hear. We work hard. It, may, it sometimes <laughs> doesn't, maybe it's not easy to spot, but we've, I mean, we try. We, we work hard on the, on the show and I, and I'm glad to hear that, that you appreciate it. And, yeah, we're, no problem. Dude. We're working hard. I th- I'm hoping that um, when we come back for like 101 plus the new season, I want to call it in a month. I want to redo a lot of things and kind of reimagine what yeah. we do here and freshen it up a lot. I've got some fun ideas and um, oh, like, that's well, awesome. well, one thing oh, we talked. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, what do you sorry. got for me? <laughs> uh, no, I was just asking about like you know because you have like two channels, right? So you got a little bit of uh, criticism about kind of like how you're balancing up the channels and everything. I don't really dig into it too much, but like yeah. you're putting a lot of effort into the, the podcast, which is awesome. But like, how would you balance out that effort with the uh, main channel, the HDHD Productions? So I think a misconception that people have is that my lack of uploads on H3H3 was due to me focusing my energy to the podcast when the truth uh, of why I wasn't posting there had wasn't an issue of time or commitment or anything like that. It was really a result of not knowing what to do there or not feeling like I was in the right headspace mm-hmm. or having a lack of motivation or just a lot of negative bad feelings around posting there. Yeah. So for me, it, a lot of people were like, oh, he stopped posting there because the podcast is more lucrative and he doesn't care about his fans or whatever. Again, just kind of people always want to see the worst in it and like just assume the worst about people. But the truth of the matter is, and one that I'm addressing now as best as I can, is that I, I am and was depressed. I mean, I'm doing much better now, I think, and yeah. something that I'm working on. But I had a lot of anxiety and a lot of issues um, that I needed to resolve, and a lot of it was manifesting itself through how I did my work there in my primary, you know, source of entertainment. And so the podcast was honestly a way for me to not disappear. Mm -hmm. It was a way for me to stay present and to still be working and to still share, share my life and be with our, with the, the people that want, that want to continue to watch us. So for me, the podcast was something to do while I sorted that shit out. 
And it's been an incredible uh, resource for me to come here and be able to share my thoughts and to not just disappear, right? Because that's not something I ever wanted to do. And so, I, again, I just think it's a misconception because now we're back to posting videos there and we're doing both and it's fine. I mean, we're busier, but it's good. I like being busy and I like mm -hmm. feeling productive. And no, I really appreciate that. I think that it's I think mental health is something that's really not addressed a lot in uh, you know the media and the way that it is addressed. It feels a little bit underplayed. Uh, it almost seems as if it's like a. Uh, capital brand, capitalist brand, it's almost like something, you know, with the better help situation, everything, I'm not going to dig it up again. But the thing is, is that the way that you're taking it very head on and seriously, I, I think I can personally commend that. I, I had my, a few hurdles in my life uh, as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but I feel as though also uh, when you were talking about, you know, uh, kind of facing an impasse in, in your uh, uploads, because I remember like when Ray William Johnson stopped posting, he said mm -hmm. something along the lines of he no longer feels gratitude in doing the same thing over and over again. Mm -hmm. So it got me thinking that if you keep doing the same type of style, the same, you know, formulaic technique, uh, wouldn't you would you feel like less intellectually challenged by doing these videos? <laughs> well, the truth is that I think so much of and even maybe what he's saying, so much of the negative feelings that you might feel is a symptom of a, de a depressive state and not actually an expressive an expression of like your creative art and that there's always a way to challenge yourself and there's always a way to make it fresh and interesting the fact is that when you're depressed you see everything through that lens and so something I've learned about myself is that before I started actually treating my depression with medicine and therapy is that you try you scramble and scramble and try to address your depression because you don't you don't like, know or you haven't accepted that you're depressed, right? So you're trying in in your mind and in your life to address all these different issues. And, oh, that's why this, and that's why that, and that's why this. But the truth is you're never actually addressing the root problem. You're addressing symptoms yeah. but never the root problem. So when you're depressed and you don't address that, you're always looking for some answer. And you're always to change. And the sad thing about it is that you're never going to fix it until you address the root cause. So for me, now that I'm feeling better, making videos is a wholesome thing. And I'm content doing it. Where before, I was always looking for something else. I was like, I need to make a show. I need to work on the podcast more. I need to uh, get off you. I need, I need to do all these other things. But those were never the answer. Those were just me looking in vain for something to make me feel better because I didn't actually understand. But now that I'm in a better place, I can see that this is a good place for me and it is a wholesome place for me. And if you want to express yourself creatively, there's always room within the formula you've created to, to find a good, wholesome, productive, happy place. It's just a matter of coming at it through the light lens. I mean, it really is a half glass a glass yeah. half full, half empty thing. And when you're depressed, it's sad. It's sadly, it's always half empty and you really just can never see the flip that. side of it. And yeah, so it's, it's, the perspective is very difficult to see in a positive light. Yeah, I, I completely agree. Um, so I, I, I want to make this a little bit. Uh, I didn't mean to drag the mood down. That was never not my at all. Those are good questions. I'm yeah, happy to talk about it. We're good. <laughs> you didn't drag it down. Yeah, um, and I think <laughs> a lot of people were wondering the same thing. So it's good, actually, to talk about it. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, since you know we're we're in the spirit of uh, bringing up things at the end of the year, I thought maybe it would be a l little nice mention to mention some of your uh, best moments in terms of uh, videos on H3 Productions, right? Mm -hmm. I really loved uh, uh, <laughs> the Honest Gold Digger. <laughs> it, it was it was honestly a really nice highlight for me because, yo, know, <laughs> I mean, he, all you did was literally say, you know, the, the guy's just you know fucking following the woman. Uh, that the woman was being completely honest, which is exactly true. Right. And the thing is, that repetition was was the highlight of the whole mm. video. It, it's it's the same thing over and over and over again. Mm. It cracks me up every single time, honestly. Well, that's <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much for yeah, saying that. I love that, that one too. That. That's cool. That was a great one this year. <laughs> yeah, I liked it because it was it was a little bit of a yeah. twist because right. I kind of resent all the the gold digger content you see on YouTube. I always thought it was just so ridiculous and. Um, 
when you finally get to see inside this quote unquote gold digger relationship, you realize that he's the flyer <laughs> and she's completely honest <laughs> about her expectations <laughs> from the beginning. And he's the one that misled her, right? right. <laughs> so it's kind of a funny uh, twist yeah. on the whole uh, narrative of the gold digger. <laughs> Yeah. No. And uh, honestly, the, the thing is, is that um, it's people look at things subject like specifically, you know, you know, she's a gold digger. She wants money. That's a negative thing. He's a victim. Well, I mean, yeah. Well, she, she said she, she's literally saying that like yeah. it doesn't make it negative. It's negative when you're trying to deceive someone yeah. in order to just, uh, achieve an objective. She <laughs> was being clear yeah. cut. She said, hey, this is what I want. Can you give it to me? Period. Just yeah. give it to me right there. Right. I don't even think yeah. she ever even pretended to love him. And he's also <laughs> in it just for her looks. Yeah, he wants her fake ass titties. <laughs> so what's the difference? Yeah. <laughs> he's a big, he's exactly, a big yeah. oaf that wants to date a pretty girl. <laughs> you know? Yeah, you know, you know, you know, it's, it's, I mean, it's her hustle. And he tried <laughs> exactly. to hustle her. And then, and first of all, the, the 90 day thing, it was never meant to work out. Like, no. it, it, it's never bound to, it's 90 days. You gotta watch well, that I'm, show. So I don't we're know. watching the show. Man, that show is heating up. Boy. <laughs> is there a new I, season? It, oh, it, yeah. yeah. And it's turning <laughs> We're in so deep. It's this, getting this so shit dark. that's happening is unimaginable. People are saying it's the darkest season it's ever, and they're hard to watch. they're abandoning the show. But I'm totally sucked in. <laughs> I heard those guys. I heard that the guy, the, the the guy from the show got arrested. Right? Oh yeah, George. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and I fucking I called it too because. In the show, he's the guy's walking around with backpacks of weed, you know, and and then and then a couple months later, they're like, "Oh, we're in legal trouble," and I was like, "Arrested for having tons of weed," and sure yeah. enough, he's in prison right now, and then Sfisa is probably, oh, she's been like lifting weights. Yeah, you seen her? She's, she's all jacked and shit. Transformed. Ooh, Georgie like, boy. I mean, well, look, if you're gonna flex about the weed business. I mean, come on. <laughs> what do you expect to happen? You're going to just like TV. Too. I know. And the <laughs> funny thing is that he's, he's a drug dealer that's not even that rich. It's like, shit, if you're going to deal <laughs> yeah. drugs, at least be richer than that. Exactly. It's, 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 it's like there's two levels of pathetic, right? Yeah. You know, there's, there's, there's the, you know, the crummy drug dealing, yada, yada. But then there's, you know, pretending to be a successful one at that. Yeah. To pretend to be a successful loser, you know? Yes. It's, I don't know, it, it just, it just took it for me like that. And, uh, honestly, I just wanted to also tell you that, you know, your commentary style, everything you've done for the past, oh, I have no, I, I don't have the exact number of years, but you've been doing it really awesomely. I, it kind of pushed me to start my own YouTube and everything. Mm. So I had a little, a few questions before I, you know, do my shameless plug-in, you know, <laughs> uh, before I get there, I have some genuine questions for you. Mm -hmm. Uh so what, since, you know, we're at the end of the year, uh, this is also kind of a little bit retrospective. What first motivated you to make these videos? Um, well, I knew that I wanted to work in comedy for a long time just because it was something I was always passionate about. But I really never, I didn't have any connections. I didn't know anyone and I didn't have any experience making comedy. So, um... I think I've mentioned this before, but, yeah. but, but, well, Ela, we made a couple of videos for Ela's class and it was really fun. Mm -hmm. And I, and I actually thought I had a knack for it, even though they weren't good or they were very weird, but I really enjoyed the process. So for me, it was kind of started as just a creative outlet and kind of honing my craft and figuring out my style. And, um, it just slowly turned into, Having a YouTube channel, which is yeah. funny because when we started making YouTube videos, we, I didn't even know YouTube being a YouTuber was a thing. Yeah, I am. Um, we just posted it there, but we didn't know like. Yeah, it, it 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 was just basically a hobby that somehow slowly started turning into something serious. Mm -hmm. um, but I, but I guess you had to have some kind of continuous motivation. I mean, the beginning of YouTube. The idea of monetization was just this abstract, you know, yeah. far away thought, right? Mm -hmm. So you were doing it based on personal inhibition, personal, I guess, ambition well, to I, succeed in this industry, which is YouTube. Well, my original idea was that I was like making a portfolio because I, mm -hmm. I was like, at best, I thought, hey, I could be a writer or something for comedy. So I was just thinking that of YouTube as a stepping stone of kind of just building a portfolio and honing my 
craft and just as a hobby too, because I, I don't have anything better to do. So I I was thinking of it in the beginning as a portfolio, mm-hmm. something like that, and be like, hey, if I can make a couple of funny videos, yeah, then maybe I can get a job somewhere. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people from College Humor, that's what they did. Mm. You know, they uh, they became writers at The Daily Show, mm. stuff like that. I completely get you. Yeah. Um, fair enough, I guess. Uh, you know, I, first of all, I, and I know this is this is a little bit of a funny story concerning your name. I'm from Saudi Arabia, and uh, we yeah. have this weird thing with the language. Basically, the letters and the numbers, uh, some numbers, because we have different letters, right? It's uh, Arabic. Mm-hmm. So some letters are expressed with numbers. And when, when I was trying to plug your channel to everyone, I guess, in school when I was a kid, I would, I would just say H3H3. And the thing is, is that when they read that, it says, <laughs> people, they, everyone sounded like, you know, <laughs> like Fat Albert. And it was, it was, it was so weird. That's Either like funny. Fat Albert or getting, having a stroke, some, something or the other. <laughs> so basically, I was plugging it everywhere, and people thought I was spazzing. <laughs> and, uh, so how do you, how do you mean, say I, it in like, uh, in, in, how, what, what, in Arabic, how do you say it? What do you mean? The, like, how were you what, saying I mean, it? I said H3H, H3, but I would send them as like text. Okay. Uh, so if you up, read it. So how would they read it? Yeah. They would say, <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> funny. That's funny. Make any sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, it's like Bill Cosby, you know, he's yelling, hey, hey. Yeah. Oh, I, I Memorable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, honestly, you've been a great inspiration to me. I don't have uh, anything else to say. I just have a few messages I wanted to say. I hope you don't mind. So you're calling uh, right now from Saudi Arabia? Oh, uh, yeah, I'm calling wow. you guys from Saudi Arabia. That's, that's interesting. Crazy. Is Yo, there... you, guys, you guys have a huge fan base here. You have really? real? Had Is no there... idea. Interesting. How interesting. Oh, yeah, I didn't know that. Base. I can tell you every country, dude. <laughs> <That's crazy. laughs> Is there anything weird going on with, like, politically? Like, um, because you seem... I'd rather not get it. Oh, you, you, can't, <laughs> you can't talk about that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can talk to you about, like, well, I can tell you some good stuff. I can't tell you the bad stuff. Mm. Uh, I can tell you about the, uh, you know, uh, they had the first concert with, with mixed, like, you know, the uh, men and women used to be segregated. Hmm. And uh, this, they just had the first concert with Black Eyed Peas, David Guetta. Oh. Uh, they, they removed the segregation between men and women, which is wow. like a huge oh. thing. Interesting. Uh, have you yeah. been Have you and, been outside uh, of uh, awesome. Saudi Arabia? Uh, yeah, totally. I'm, oh. I'm actually, st- I study in the UK. I'm just back for a Christmas break. Oh, cool. Oh, cool. cool. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I've been to, I've been to New York, I've been to Boston mm. and I've been, I've been, I mean, yeah. for visiting, I've been a lot around, but, <laughs> but the, you know, this is my hometown. The government is pretty tight there, right? About like internet usage and stuff. I, I mean, it's, it's, I guess porn is the only thing you can't use. Damn. You know? <laughs> damn. No wonder. Damn. No wonder people, I mean, shit. <laughs> Yo, that's why people watch your videos, man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's the next best thing. So when the, when yeah, we see a comment, I fapped to this. It's not a joke. It's, it's three a.m. So. You know, you get the urge. You open. You yeah, watch look some at that poop thick boy. Yo, so let me ask you this: Are people in Saudi Arabia getting all? Are do they jerk off to like this? Like you know, are the video we made like the egg sandwich video? Is that like good the porn? Egg Dude, that's the top search, dude. <laughs> that's the good shit in Saudi Arabia? Is that what people beat off to? Yeah. <laughs> 3 a.m. Education. Right? But you probably use Egg a VPN. H3. But you, use, <laughs> you probably use a VPN, right, if you're trying to find some good shit. I, I, I don't talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can't wow. talk about it. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look, let's be real. I mean, in terms of VPN usage, it's it's not even, like, hidden. Like, people use VPN regularly because the thing is that it used to be the case that, like, stuff like WhatsApp call is banned. It's mm. not that you can't call people. It was only banned because the, the, the main conglomerate uh, didn't want competition. Mm. They just wanted people... The phone. It wasn't even like a censorship type of deal. We just didn't want any company. Mm-hmm. But then they decided, like, let's just have a, what's it called, like a com- com- competitive market. Mm-hmm. So you know, just they unbanned it, and uh, yeah, WhatsApp calls back. That's <laughs> a huge stride after the women driving thing. <laughs> nice. Yeah. I, mean, no, I I use WhatsApp all the time to call Israel. 
I'm just imagining yeah. not having yeah. porn. I mean, what a fucking nightmare. <laughs> that, then, is that what's stuck you, dude? I would, be, I would definitely be on YouTube. Like, there's some weird pornographic videos on YouTube that we always make fun of. I would be there. Naked yoga. I just, see, I just need to see a little bit of side boob, and I'm coming in my pants. <laughs> I have a little more sympathy for him. Bro, you got, you got, you got, what's it called? Filthy Frank and, and Max Mofo and Idubs doing videos together, and you want us to look for the, the side boob? That's enough. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> they don't. They, they don't overlap. I need both. You need both. What if we got a filthy Frank side boot? Would, would that be good? Come on, I'm just in my pants at the thought of it. <laughs> so, uh, what's no, your you? What? Uh, do you want to plug your channel? Yeah, you were just gonna yeah, do it. 100%. I think. Uh, okay, so first of all, uh, my friend really insisted that I say this message. Um, so, uh, Sofia Gagliano supports and loves you and shredder mm. uh really wanted Thank me to you. say that um, god bless you <laughs> sophia and and then there's the uh base my channel is called fifths and Fifth, the thing spell is, that i really f-i-f-s f-i-f-s. 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 <laughs> yeah and the thing is and here's the thing before I, you guys close the call because i've been talking too much i know um <laughs> Uh, basically, the thing is, I op- I posted one Fortnite criti- critical analysis, which sounds very juvenile, but I mean, I wanted to upload another video, but I didn't get the chance quite. Uh, but it's coming up in a few days, whatever the hell, if, if that means anything. Uh, but yeah, you guys should uh, follow it, and uh, yeah, that's my hustle. I hope you guys have a good stream. I hope. Thank I you, wish man. you guys the Thank best. you. Yeah, we had we did have a great stream, and I actually. Very appreciate you donating and calling in. Yeah. Actually, interesting to talk to somebody from Saudi Arabia too, yeah. a fan from there. That's very cool. That's no problem, dude. We should awesome. keep in touch. We should keep in touch because yeah. I like that that fresh perspective out there. Although I don't know how much you can talk about, but it's very fascinating to talk, connect with somebody on that side of the world. You guys have my email. I'm down to have right. like another little bit of interview whenever you guys want. Cool. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you for the thoughtful questions. Thank you for the donation. Thank you for watching, man. We appreciate you, dude, and, and best of luck with everything you're doing. Mm-hmm. Best of luck with you, too. Papa right. bless. Papa bless Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate you.